down here on East Campus at our historic lilac collection. So these are some very old lilacs we have on campus. Um, and a lot of us have lilacs at home. You may have had some problems this year. I'm here with Kyle and, and first Kyle. I know the environment's been a problem this year. We had kind of weird spring and a weird summer. What's going on with our lilacs this year? Well, there's been quite a few things going on this year, as, as you've alluded to. You know, when you think about some of the environmental conditions that we have had, that, those, that late near frost that we had or has really shown up, has caused a lot of injury that doesn't necessarily show up right away. But once we got into the heat of the summer, we're now starting to see some fairly severely blighted, blighted branches. You know, additionally, the heat that we've had, the heat and the drought. And so if you're like me and you haven't been watering your lilacs near as much as you should, you're going to get some tip dye back. Combine that with the dry winter that we had had, drought conditions, a lot of, a lot of environmental problems leading to just poor looking lilacs. Right. You know, but we've also had some diseases show up. Okay. So when we think about lilac diseases, powdery mildew is one of the first that comes to our mind. And powdery mildew is that white superficial growth on the top side of the leaf. Normally it's not a very major problem, but it can lead to some early defoliation. The other, the more problematic diseases that we tend to see are bacterial blight um, caused by a pseudomonas bacteria and a fungal disease called pseudocercospora leaf blight. Okay. For the, for the bacterial leaf blight, that's a disease that tends to be favored by cooler temperatures. And okay. so we see that a little bit more in the spring. Sure. Um, and it, it kind of will lead to some brown spots on the leaves and maybe some leaf, some leaf defor de deformation, depending on when that infection occurred. Okay. Now, the one that I've been seeing a lot more of right now is our fungal disease. And that is, again, our Pseudocercospora leaf spot. Not a whole lot is known about this, uh, about this disease. Um, we didn't, didn't really see it until about three to four years ago. It just kind of showed up and it showed up everywhere, it seems. Okay. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more aggressive on plants that are stressed due to, due to drought, injury, uh, maybe there's some herbicide damage as well. So, you know, I'm really not that great at, at pruning my lilacs. Mm -hmm. How could I do some renewal pruning at home to prevent this fungus from taking over? Well, you know, so this, and that's a great question, this particular collection, we had allowed, it's been here for a long time, for 30 plus years, we allowed it to get larger and larger over time. It was very popular, flowered really nice. We finally got to the point where, just like kind of at home, you felt like, okay, I need to go in and start doing some pruning. I, I finally need to do something about it. We started doing some caning in here uh, and got pretty aggressive with that tried to bring the height down so they're back down to a manageable level. Instead of being 12, 15 feet tall, we wanted to get them more in the six to seven, eight foot range. So that's gone on for a couple of years. You know, and I think too, um, so we've done that, which you would think in some ways would help, unless of course, you know, one thing we didn't do with maybe sanitation between cutting. And if, if this is something that you really need to be doing some sanitation, is that a concern? Probably. Probably not. You know, it's always it's always a good idea to be to be cleaning your clippers or pruning tools between between plants. But you know, this is not one that we would expect to survive too much on the on the pruning um, pruning equipment. Okay. Also, good. it's primarily going to infect the leaves. Okay. And so we don't really we're not really too concerned about the fungal disease getting into the into the plant and causing a vascular wilt or anything like okay. that. Okay. So as we go into the fall, I recommend, you know, we see some dead here. Certainly you want to prune out any dead branches that you have. Um, you don't want to do a lot of pruning this time of year. It'll affect your, your flower in the spring, obviously. So we typically prune, do our major pruning in lilacs in the spring. And again, we look at that kind of caning thing. But right now, not a lot of pruning, just taking out the dead. For fungus concerns going into the fall? You know, one of the biggest things is going to be managing how we water. And so I'm trying to, making sure that we're using soaker hoses, not that overhead watering that can splash those fungal spores up onto other healthy leaves. And hopefully if you follow some of those tips, your lilacs will come back great next year.